What is up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2021 Mazda 3 GT Turbo All-Wheel Drive. Hey guys, just before we get started with this video, I want to give a big shout out to Ben at Levin's Mazda for hooking me up with this 2021 Mazda 3 Turbo. The whole process was super smooth, just like this car. So let's get this out of the way. This is not replacing the Mazda Speed 3. Yes, the Mazda Speed 3 was discontinued in 2013, but no, this is not the replacement. This is completely different. This is the most powerful M3 that they make in today's Mazda lineup, but this is not a replacement for a Mazda Speed 3. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the exterior. I'm gonna talk about the front, the side, and the back. I'm also gonna talk about the trunk room, the back seat room, and obviously how good the tech is with this Mazda Sport GT Turbo all-wheel drive. I'm also gonna take it for a drive, see how it handles, and finally get a special someone's opinion who has owned this Mazda 3 Turbo GT all-wheel drive, blah, 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 for the last month. So as always, don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to hit the notification bell. Bing! Now in 2020 and 2021, the Mazda 3 did win Canadian Ajax midsize car of the year. Weird on that one, but it did win the midsize. I don't know how this is midsize. This is like compact. So the hatch version is called the Sport and it makes no difference because if you got this in a hatch or a sedan, it's still as sporty because there's a lot of sport in here, but there's a ton more luxury. And that's why I think this doesn't compete against the GTI or the WRX. Yes, it's priced the same, but it doesn't really compete against it. There are two different people that want it. One is mature and older, and the other is also mature and maybe not as old. Identity issues aside, the front of this thing is spectacular. Because this is the GT Turbo all-wheel drive in black, you have all black front grille. Also, there is no fog lights. It is built into these adaptive headlights that do have these angel eyes slash ellipsoids. I love the way they look. It's just a very clean, not a lot going on except for these headlights staring at you. This also like a Maserati, doesn't it? Kind of this thing. I don't know, it's a good looking car, man. In addition to make the looks even more exciting, you can actually add something called an aero kit and that gives you a front valence, side skirts, and a rear valence that kind of adds a bit more sportiness to this sport. Before I jump under the hood, I want to show you that most of these new vehicles have most of their front radar detection built in to the front emblem. This also does have a front de-icer, which at this price point is pretty crazy to actually have. So anyways, let's check under the hood and show you the engine variants in Mazda 3 across the board. You can get three different sort of engine variants. You can get the two liter, you can get the two and a half liter, and then the two and a half liter turbo in this thing with its prop rod. Now the three power ranges go like this. If you get the two liter, you get 155 horsepower and 150 foot pounds of torque. If you get the two and a half liter non-turbo, you get 186 horsepower and 186 foot pounds of torque. If you get this motor, you actually get 227 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque when you use regular gas. You see, that's pretty cool. You can put regular gas in this thing. But if you got deep pockets like Ian, cause he's the guy that owns it, he actually makes 250 horsepower and 320 foot-pounds of torque, but check this out. It is not with a dual clutch. It actually has a six-speed torque converter transmission, and that is because of smoothness. You see, sometimes DSGs aren't as smooth as you think. You actually have to make it smoother, and you get that with a six-speed transmission. Now, you probably won't get the lurch off the line as fast with that, this transmission, but it is smoother. Yes, it is all-wheel drive, and for the finale, it's not available manual. On a serious note though, look how this engine is squeezed in this thing. As a purchaser, I'm coming to look at it, I'm like, there's a lot of engine here. There's not a lot of room. Like they filled in every little gap and the turbocharger's back there. It is pretty awesome. I mean, I know why they didn't put manual in, probably because they're thinking there's just not enough buyers, but really, who's your competition? Subaru? That's it, that's all you got. Otherwise, come on, Mastin, keep us manual. Just look at the comments. Don't listen to me. 
So as Ian reminded me, this is actually an economy car and I keep getting it confused because there's so much standard equipment that comes with Mazdas. It's nothing new. Mazdas always given you a ton of equipment. Like this thing's got full radar cruise control that actually takes over steering up to 40 miles an hour or 65 kilometers. It actually does have rear cross traffic alert, blind spot indicator, has tons of stuff, 360 camera. I'll, I'll get into the list when I'm driving, but there's a lot of equipment in the Mazda 3s. But yes, this feels a lot more premium. And you'll see that when I take it for a drive and show you the interior, because it is. It starts at 35,000 bucks and pretty much it's well loaded at that price point. American, kidding, it's Canadian, 35,000 Canadian. That's a good price point for this thing. Now the side of the vehicle is where it gets interesting. You see, there's no actual dynamic line or there's no shoulder line, it's just rounded. Now they do have this sort of dark silver trim that goes up and kinks around here. But in terms of lines, as I mentioned, there is a line on the bottom. And when I look at that line, I really notice that this black one has a ton of orange peel down here. Now I can't see it anywhere else in the car, just on the bottom here. And that line brings me to it. You see, this is important because Mazda really loves their paint so much so that on their website, they talk about how important their three stage paint job is, but they only give it to one color. And of course that color starts with a soul. Soul Red. Soul Red is a three-stage paint shop that Mazdas really, really look good in. They look good in black too, but you know, they really talk about their red. But the meat and potatoes is really the back and the side. You see, this is where it's at. This gives me some GTC Lusso vibes. Yes, it's a poor man's Ferrari. Or it even gives me the Alfa Romeo Barrera. Now it's a really old Alfa, but it really gives me that vibe back here. If you haven't seen it, come take a look. So as I walk to the back and I pop this a gas opener here, it would be cool if Mazda put can use regular fuel or high performance fuel because then it would let the owner know, hey, it's versatile. But on the back here, doesn't this give you some super fast vibes? I mean, listen guys, I know it's a Mazda 3 and I know it's only 35,000 bucks, but there is some sort of super fast look. Compare this to this. Now the back is really where I like, obviously, as you guys know, because it is wide and it feels a bit wide body. And people say this is a sport hatch, but really it looks more like a shooting brake to me. Just the design of it is not really hot or sport hatch. It's a shooting brake. Now let's take a look at the back, as I mentioned, and these taillights, they are darkened and they do have these four little cool LEDs. These are for the signals and that is for the reverse. And it is very, very bright. And it visually doesn't look like they'd have them in there. That's the cool part about it. It just visually looks really, really cool. Now they also have changed the font that Mazda is using. They are a new, this is the new version because most car manufacturers are sort of rebranding globally, not just per continent. The whole rebrand is across the board in all their cars. And this is no different, except where's the GT? Because Mazda 3, all wheel drive, Skyactiv G, turbo, but where's the GT? Let me know in the comments below. Now, if you wanna pop the trunk, they've got this nice little tool touch pad underneath here. You push it, it opens up the trunk. But before we jump in the trunk, let's not forget about the two tailpipes that are larger when you get the turbo on both sides. They are larger than your regular Mazda 3. Now, in terms of space, there is not much underneath here except for the Bose subwoofer. And we'll get into the audio when we get in the car. But in terms of space, so we've got 33 inches as far as depth. And in terms of width, we've got just about 41. Now when we want to close this trunk, it actually confused me because it does have a lock button here, which reminds me of power tailgates. When you hit it, it closes. This is just to lock the doors when you leave. You hit the button, you close it, and she locks. All right, so I'm in the back of the 2021 Mazda 3 GT all-wheel drive turbo. And this interior is called Garnet Red. And here is where the Audi comparisons start. Now, one of the biggest complaints about the Mazda 3 GT hatchback is the fact that it doesn't have a lot of back seat room. And this one in specific has really thick seats and you can tell by sitting in them, they're just very thick. thick. There's just a lot of meat. Yeah, we're talking about seats here. Now this does have two cup holders in the armrest. It doesn't have rear vents. It doesn't have USB, but it's got really, really good interior. This door panel is nice and solid. When I got in, I felt solid. It's got a fairly uh, decent amount of headroom in the back. I wouldn't say that, but again, these seats just feel really solid and comfortable in here. Um, let's try the seat belt. Sometimes you feel it out and yep, they're light and easy. This does have 60, 40 split. So these seats fold down very easily. And again, yeah, back seats, nothing to really talk about, except maybe the fact that we've got sort of 
magazines holders instead of the back seats, but nothing in the front. It does have cutouts so I can put my legs in, and it does have a zipper here, I guess, to make it easy to change them. But other than that, decent visibility when you're in the back. Mm, kind of tight feeling a little bit because it does have a black headliner. So if you're not used to having, having a car with a black headliner, it does feel a little bit claustrophobic, but it does have the room, as you can see. Getting in, though, is a little bit tough because of the design of the car. Slightly, I gotta kink my head a little bit. Truth, no lies. All right, so if I haven't lost you already, this video does get better. Now, we apologize for some of the grading in the colors. It's kind of hard to film a dark, dark car inside the studio, so hopefully it was good enough for you. But this is where the car gets exciting, the driver's position seat. The seat is really, really good in here. And I mentioned the back is really good, but the front really takes the cake. Now, this does have a ton of options. Let me just turn this down a little bit, pretty easy. Really good, soft buttons. Now, one of the biggest keys to this, or complaints, is the fact that this doesn't have a touchscreen. And I'll get on that first because, again, we're talking about an Audi interior here. Now, I use that as a compliment because it's just very good. A lot of great leathers, a lot of soft, nice touch pieces, and a lot of solidness to it. But more so, it's the layout of the interface. It's done down here through a rotary knob, and the volume is right next to it, pretty much exactly the same as an Audi. The difference being, though, is that people want touchscreen at this price point, and this doesn't offer it, but why? Now, Mazda says it's because they want the integration to be all down here, and it takes your eyes off the road if you're kind of do a touchscreen, but this doesn't have touchscreen, as I mentioned. And I like it because, really, it's muscle memory. You get in the car, you sort of do two clicks down, you push, you do three clicks up, you push. It's sort of in your mind, whereas with touchscreen, you still have to take your eyes off the road and look at it, press it, make sure you pressed it, and then press it again, and that can get annoying. So I actually really like the fact they went with this system. That's what I think. Everything else looks pretty straightforward. They actually did customize Bose, and I'm not a huge, huge fan of Bose, but Bose actually sat and customized the sound system in this specific Mazda 3. Not Ian's Mazda 3, but Mazda 3 GT all-wheel drive turbo in general. And I want to clarify that because Bose actually, and I quote, a concert hall in your car is what they tell you when you sit in this. And the reason I bring that up is because there's actually a difference between putting an audio system in a hatchback versus an audio system in a sedan. You see, across the line, it takes six feet for a base curve to hit, and it's actually done differently in a sedan than it is a hatchback. So they're obviously thinking about it. They've got this fancy anodized sort of steel appearance looking wafer across the bow sound system. It makes it feel really, really luxury. And this is not like a GTI. This is definitely not like a WRX. This is luxury. So I get why Mazda's sort of gone a different direction. They're really not competing against those other guys. As far as tech, as I mentioned, this has got a ton of tech. It does have frameless windows like the Audis. It does also have Audi center vents. And I don't mean center for the driver. I mean center for the passenger. You see, they've kind of got this seamless look through the dash, just like the Audi A4 did. And they're basically doing the same thing here, except for this is closed off, not open. Now to elaborate in more Audi-esque stuff, it does have a sliding armrest. It also does have really good quality HVAC knobs, which is totally Audi. It does have a heated steering wheel. It does also have an awesome 360 camera, as you can see here. It also does have a center digital display. Now, not the whole thing's digital, just the center. It does also have what, uh, what Audi, what Mazda calls, see, I'm getting caught up in being in an Audi here. It also does have Mazda's sort of dynamic heads up display, which shows you stuff like blind spot. There's a car in your blind spot also shows you in the center here. It also shows you speed and you know, your lane assist and that kind of stuff, but it's just really, really done well. And I feel like I'm in a luxury vehicle. It doesn't feel like I'm an economy at all. It doesn't feel like a Mazda three. And that's probably what they want you to feel like not in a Mazda three. And every time I stop that, it still has more Audi esque stuff. Like when I put in reverse, the mirrors actually fold down to see the curb. It actually does have, as I mentioned, 360 camera that shows me my wheels in the back. Pretty awesome. It does have four, all four windows actually have auto. They go up and down automatically. That is a lot of quality. When I open up this glove box and I let it drop, it softly closes and opens. It's quality. Foot to the ground. So it's pretty much what I expected in terms of solidness on the road. It's smooth, steering is very good. Something that another brand, Kia, does also very well. They've really heightened my understanding of how the, 
I wouldn't say economy car, but how that market of vehicle has just improved like substantially. This car drives very, now I'm driving the country here and to get here, I had about a 10 minute little trek and it just, it's solid, it's smooth. It also kind of maybe feels that the sound is plumbed in, but we're not sure. Maybe a really small sono tube that goes from the engine to the cabin, minus the carbon dioxide. It's just feels good. The brakes are a little bit weak. I like if the brakes were a little bit more grippier or graspier when I hit the pedal. Um, but really solid car. It feels really luxurious. It's got a really nice quiet cabin. Odd though, because they've got your driver modes and there's only two off, which it actually says off and sport. So sport, here we go. RPMs go up, steering. Yeah, seems like it does a better job. Okay, that's off, that's on, that's off. Yeah, feels the same for steering. But the RPMs go up in sport. You know what I will say? Let me put this off and get quiet here. What I will say is that cars that impress me are cars that you don't really feel how fast you're driving. And I've always kind of said that with German stuff. German stuff, you get in, you drive, you don't really feel how fast you're driving. And this has that same feeling. It just doesn't feel as fast as I'm driving. It doesn't feel fast outside, but I'm looking at it. I'm going fast. This heads up display is actually really good too. When the stop sign is there, it actually comes up in red and it's a little square, it's a stop, but it's nice and clean. It's not super huge, it's a good enough size. Anyways, let me take some corners here. Let's throw it in sport, on the brakes, a little bit harder than I'd like to, on the throttle and Nice, good little grip. This has got 18 inch wheels. The other thing is this has a really big engine for its car. It's a two and a half liter four cylinder. It's one of the biggest four cylinders you can buy. It's a bit of front wheel, wheel bias because this is a front wheel bias all wheel drive, but it's, it's a fun little car. It's funny, actually, I was kind of hugging the center lane there and on the center, it gave me this little red arrow saying, scoot over, scoot over. <laughs> It's a fun little car, and that is because of the short wheel base. I don't know how it won the midsize Ajax car of the year, because this is not a sh midsize car. It's a short wheel base car, and you could tell with that little corner I just whipped around, and it's good. <laughs> it feels, I feel very confident at good speed. There's no doubt about it. On the corner, on the throttle. Now these are 18 inch wheels, so they don't feel as firm as some of the ones that have 19s, which is nice. I kind of like the fact it's got 18s, but that heads up display is nice. It's pretty much directly in line. It's small enough, it's not huge. It doesn't really bother me on the throttle here. It's the brakes that I'd like a little bit better brakes. They're good, but they're probably not built for this specific power. There's another determining factor with all this is that Mazda offers across their line an unlimited warranty in Canada for three years for anything that goes wrong and powertrain is five and rust is seven. So that could take you over the edge. Unlimited warranty, unlimited mileage warranty so you can drive as much as you want for those who like to drive as much as they want. Now this doesn't have launch control but it does zero to 60 or zero to 100 in just under six seconds, 5.8, 5.7, 5.9 depending who test it. Um, but one of the funny things about it is the red line. Now it doesn't bounce off the red line. It sort of sits just above red line and does this sort of funny like jibber jabber, like it's gonna go, but it's not gonna go. Um, so we're not, not gonna really push it. And that's because it has a six speed transmission. Again, it's not a sequential gearbox, so it's not really designed for it. It makes you feel like it could do it. It's fast enough, but it's not really there for full performance. But I'll show you anyways. We're in manual, throw it over, foot on the ground. It's a boost and front slips in and all-wheel drive. As I said, it's front-wheel biased. And that just kind of, it does this one of these slow. Anyways, don't take my word for it. Take the guy that actually owns this car. Ian, you want to jump on in here and tell the people what they want to hear because you own this car for one month. So, guys, I'm out. I'll let Ian take over from here. Catch you next time. Hey, wait, but don't, don't jump. Ian's jumping in. What's up guys, this is my Mazda 3 Turbo, let's talk about it. And I'm gonna go over five things I really like and five things I don't like after having owned this for two months. All right, let's get into five things that I really like about this car. So let's go with the first thing, and that's the looks. I think this car inside and out looks pretty sweet. 
From the inside, you wouldn't even know you're in a Mazda. Like Mike says, it feels like a pretty premium product in here and much different from something like a Volkswagen GTI or something like a Subaru WRX, where their interiors have kind of gotten a little dated. However, you might just get a little more of an exciting driving experience out of a GTI as compared to this. It's not thrashy. Everything in here is pretty smooth when you're driving. And that brings me to my second point, and that is the driving experience and the steering wheel. Just the handling, everything feels great. The car feels really grounded and you'd never feel like you're in danger when you're making the turn. And really just like the steering wheel feels and just looks like it's from a German car. The third thing is this driving position. It just feels like it's good for your back. It's just you sit properly. And my Ford Focus was really comfortable, but I always felt like I was slouching or, or doing something wrong. I feel like these seats kind of like force you to have a good driving position. The sound system in this car is sweet. It's the Bose audio sound system. The bass sounds great. When the bass goes, nothing rattles in the car. I had a, like I said, in my 2018 Ford Focus, whenever you turn the bass up a little too high, the doors start to rattle and it just, you're like, why am I, why am I listening to this? Whereas this feels like it was engineered for this car. Number five would be the 360 camera. It's pretty sweet to have a 360 camera in a small car like this. I find I use it all the time now. The quality is really good. All right, so let's move on to dislikes. Now I've had this car for two months, like I said, and these are some of the things that have maybe irked me or just could use improvement. And the very first thing, and I've seen this on a lot of car reviews, is the parking brake. It always engages when you turn the car off. So when you come back into your car, it's always on and many times I've just hit the gas hard and the car hasn't gone anywhere, which can't be good for the car at all. I do kind of wish that there was somewhere in the settings to turn that off, but as of now, there isn't. Number two, piano black. Never a good idea, especially around where you're putting your cups or your car keys. It's always gonna get scratched up. So yeah, this doesn't look so great after two months already. Number three would be Apple CarPlay with this setup. Since it's not a touch screen, you're kind of, it takes a lot of twists and turns to get to where you want in CarPlay. As for the actual infotainment, it's great. Muscle memory kicks in and it's super easy to use. However, just with CarPlay, since it's meant for touch screen, this system doesn't work the greatest with it. Now it's definitely not a deterrent from buying this car, but you just have to get used to it. And it takes a few weeks to get used to it. Number four would just be the camera button. I kind of wish the camera button was on this side of this car and not on the left. I find when I'm pulling into a spot where I'm trying to make sure I'm not gonna hit something, it's kind of annoying to go this way. I feel like I could pay attention more if I knew it was over here. Just a weird thing, kind of reaching, but I wish it was on this side. Number five is the front sensor beeping. When you pull into a drive-through and you're trying to get closer to another car, it starts to beep and it doesn't stop after you hit the brakes. It just keeps beeping for like eight times and you're just sitting there and I'm like, I'm not moving. I would just say, once you hit the brakes, the beeping should stop. So yeah, guys, overall, it's an awesome daily driver and I'm still looking for excuses to go out and drive every day, which is what a daily driver should be. You should want to enjoy to drive your car. I definitely enjoy driving this. Now, some people ask, uh, do you notice a difference with the 93 octane versus just regular fuel? A little bit. I find it's like smoother and more responsive when I'm running it on 93. That might just be psychological too. Not entirely sure. Lately, I've just been running it on regular just to save money. And it's still really fun to drive around. It's really not that much of a difference. Overall, I'm super pleased with this car. I think I might get some of the aero kit options on it later on and definitely gonna get my brakes painted red. I always just like the way that looks. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this review on my Mazda 3 Turbo. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave us comments below. Make sure to subscribe and hit that like button. It helps us immensely. Thanks so much for watching, guys. See you on the next one. Well, you might not see me, but you'll see Mike. I don't know how I feel about being on the other side of the camera.